It's now my distinct pleasure to introduce ACI's president, Kerry Kopzinski, to open our international session with his introductory remarks about ACI's international programs, chapters, and aspirations. Mr. Kopzinski is the founding principal and CEO of Kerry Kopzinski & Company, an award-winning structural engineering firm with offices in Seattle and Chicago. CKC designs major urban buildings throughout the United States and beyond. The firm has won over 80 regional, national, and international awards and has been selected several times by Zwieg White and Civil and Structural Engineer Magazine as a top structural engineering firm to work for. Mr. Kobzinski is a licensed civil and structural engineer in many states and a recognized expert in the design of reinforced concrete and post-tension concrete building structures. He served on the Board of Trustees of the ACI Foundation and on ACI's Board of Direction and Financial Advisory Committee. He also served for many years on ACI Committee 318 and Joint ACI ASCE Committee 352, Joints and Connections in Monolithic Concrete Structures. ACI honored him in 2017 with the Alfred E. Lindau Award and in 2015 with the Charles S. Whitney Medal for his outstanding contributions to the concrete industry. ENR Magazine has twice selected Kubzinski as one of its top 25 newsmakers for CKC's pioneering work in the fields of high strength reinforced bar and steel fiber reinforced concrete. Mr. Kobzinski is a past president of the Structural Engineers Association of Washington and past president of the ACI Washington State Chapter. Please help me in welcoming ACI President, president Kerry Kobzinski. Well, thank you very, very much, Kerry. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. And the first thing I want to confirm is that you do hear me, correct? Yes, we do. Okay, great. So what I'll present, this will be a very high flyover of international activities by ACI, our partners, chapters, and programs. The American Concord Institute, as we all know, extends far beyond America. We have partners and chapters all over the world, and our international activity is very important to the mission and vision of the organization. So let me begin by talking about our vision. Our vision is a future where everyone has the knowledge needed to use concrete effectively. And as I say, that extends far beyond North America. Our mission, which feeds that vision, is to develop and disseminate knowledge about concrete and it's consensus-based knowledge. We're not a trade association. We don't um, support any particular aspect of the industry. We're, we're neutral in, in the uh, world of concrete. We're a professional society and our mission is to develop and disseminate consensus-based knowledge about concrete. 71 countries are currently using the ACI code. Now, when I say using the ACI code, in many countries, they have officially adopted it for use. In other countries, our codes are in use, although not officially adopted. For example, in Laos, we've done some recent work uh, with Asia and um, parts of the world uh, in that orbit. And Laos is an example of a country that uses our code, but has not yet officially adopted it. But we have our codes being used in 71 countries. We have 57 international partners on six different continents. The only continent is Antarctica. As far as we know, we don't have a lot of need for concrete in Antarctica. But we do have 57 written partnership agreements and they look as you see here on this map. So we are spread pretty much around the world. We have a very broad wingspan with, within the world of ACI. These partnership agreements allow us to, uh, oops, go back. These partnership agreements are for the purpose of collaborating with our partners for a mutual benefit. So we engage with our partners around the world. We identify aspects of the industry where we can work together for a mutual benefit. In terms of chapters, the middle bullet on your screen, 41 chapters outside the US. So we truly are global in our chapter activity. And the last bullet on the screen, 184 student chapters outside of the US. So between the full chapters and the student chapters, we have a lot of activity well beyond the United States. If you look at the map of these 41 international chapters, 
again, you can see that we're global in scope. We're in 30 countries with chapter activity. If you superimpose the partners and the chapters, we cover the world even on a more comprehensive scale. We're in 54 countries. And if you look at the key down here in the lower left of the map, you'll see that in some countries, for example, in Russia, we have a partnership agreement with Russia. We do not have chapters in Russia, but nevertheless, we have activity there. And other parts of the world, we have activity in both spheres, both with chapters and with partnership agreements. And those are the green, the green countries. So ACI, as I mentioned earlier, extends far beyond America. The work that we do internationally is critical to our mission and our vision. A couple of other international activities that I think are of interest to people. We launched earlier this year, our first ever center of excellence. It's a separate entity with a separate mission, mission and vision. Uh, Jeff Coleman, our prior president, rolled this out at our virtual convention in March. It's referred to as NEXT, and the purpose of NEXT is to simulate the use, to promote the use of non-metallic reinforcing, to essentially uh, disseminate knowledge associated with non-metallic reinforcing products. We will be using the template that was trailblazed by our first ever center of excellence for a couple of other centers of excellence that we expect to roll out uh, potentially later this year or certainly next year. So next will be the first of several centers of excellence that will have, there'll be independent entities with uh, independent boards of directors and very focused activity centered around in this particular case, the use of non-metallic reinforcing. And if you'd like to learn more about that, you can see there's a website at the bottom of your screen, nonmetallic.org. We are also looking for additional partners. Whoops, let me go back just a moment. We're accepting additional partners. Our current partner for NEXT, which helped with the rollout, is Aramco. And we are looking for additional partners. So anyone who might have an interest or know someone who would be interested in becoming a partner in NEXT activity, we certainly would welcome uh, that communication with you. And another topic, 24 hours of concrete knowledge. This was a brand new initiative that started just this past year in July. And what it involved was a full day, 24 full hours of presentations. We had 12 international partners engaged, 12 international chapters participating. We had two speakers from each. And so we had 48 total presentations, 30 minutes each, nonstop around the clock. And we have on-demand viewing available afterwards. We had 700 plus attendees. So we considered that to be a big success for the first ever 24 hours of concrete knowledge. And based on that success, we do intend this to be an annual event. So we have planning underway already for another 24 hours of concrete knowledge in 2022. We'll be sending invitations out in early 2022, and we do have sponsorships available. If you'd like to learn more about the potential sponsorship availability or just learn more about 24 Hours of Concrete Knowledge in general, you're welcome to contact Bernie Picor, who directs our international activities. We have an International Code Summit coming up in December, just a couple of months from now. And the purpose of that Code Summit is to convene experts from around the world who are involved with international code activity, and particularly with ACI 318 and other code documents that are developed by ACI. We want to understand better uh, about the code adoption process in different parts of the world, where some of the roadblocks might be. In, in some countries, code adoption is relatively straightforward. In other countries, we do have roadblocks. We want to understand those better and learn how we might be able to eliminate some of those roadblocks to pave the way for our code adoption in those countries. And we'll have quite a few things being discussed in addition, in addition to just the roadblocks that stand in the way of our code adoption, uh, impacts on local materials and regional testing, for example, the second bullet. We all know that concrete is a very regional material and that concrete varies depending upon the constituents that we produce the material with. And so we'd like to understand that a little better from 
the code adoption and code official standpoint. And some other additional programs that are coming up, um, Standards Alliance 2, for example, at the top of your screen, ANSI and USAID, ANSI is a private association, USAID is a, is a governmental association based in Washington, DC. They provided a grant to us to explore code adoption opportunities in Sub-Saharan Africa. We hope to introduce our ACI Ambassador Speaker Program again in 2022. It's dependent on COVID, of course, but assuming that COVID continues to trend down, we hope to be resuming Ambassador Speakers in 2022. And then we have ongoing translation of ACI documents. That's been an ongoing activity for quite a number of years. We intend to stay focused on that. And we have quite a lot of student member and student chapter activity that we will also remain focused on. So with that, I thank you for the opportunity to make this brief presentation. I hope you found it informative.